Hello people the web and YouTube, ZTBK here, welcome back to another Hack Time tutorial video! Whoa! So okay guys, as you can tell by the name of the video, today I'm going to be teaching you how to jam Wi-Fi using nothing more than an A-Node MCU, and I mean that literally, this thing is called A-Node MCU. Basically it's a dev board, and I gotta say, this whole tutorial and all the software is not mine, I'm actually following another tutorial and using the software that the user Space Hun has developed, and well, I gotta say, this guy makes a lot of cool um, software mods and hardware mods, I really recommend going and checking out his GitHub page, but like I said, I'm gonna be following his tutorial and I'm gonna be showing you step by step how to do this thing is super easy. Now, for the f most part, all you got to do is go over to his GitHub page and download the current release, which you can find here at this URL that I will have down below in the description. Now, first of all, I just want to say he's since updated this to version 1.2 and I have that currently installed on here right now. And yes, I was actually gonna just buy this thing and flash it for the first time on cam, but the box was so beat up I had to flash it beforehand just to make sure this thing wasn't broke. And for the most part, it works pretty good. So yeah, what you want to do is you want to download that um, bin file. It don't really matter which one you want to download, but for the most part, just download one of them. And then you want to download the node MCU flasher. Basically, this is... um. I don't really know how to put it, a flasher that was basically user made. For the most part, you want to use um, the Arduino to flash your device, but since I'm trying to keep this tutorial as simple as possible, I'm going to use the custom flasher that they have built just for this project. Now, first of all, you want to download that just by clicking on the link, going to Windows 64 or Windows 32, depending on your operating system. And for the most part, with this tool, you'll only be able to flash it on Windows. I believe Arduino and its software can work on Macs. So you may have to do it the more advanced way if you wish to flash this device on a Mac computer. But yeah, once you have both them things downloaded, just as I already have done, you want to open up the Node ESP8266 flasher. I don't know why they just didn't call it Node MCU, but yeah, you will see COM1, COM2, COM3, COM4, a bunch of like COM ports, but I will be teaching you how to distinguish them apart from this device. Now, first of all, I don't have the device plugged in, so I'm just going to close out of that, grab this little cord here, and we're going to plug this bad boy in and hopefully I can plug it in right without breaking it. I almost broke it the first time. And well, yeah, it's plugged in. It should flash up blue just for a second, then turn off. Don't worry, that's normal. Just put it down and then open up the flashing software again. And for the most part, mine should be called um, COM5 if I remember. I don't know. Let's just easily check this by going into the device manager and... As you can see, it will pop up in here underneath um, ports, I believe. Yeah, I don't have mine plugged in, right? I just got an error for that. So let me try another USB port and we'll plug this thing in again. Here we go. This time it will work, hopefully. And yeah, there we go. Mine's labeled as COM6. And you can clearly tell that because if I were to unplug this, you will see it disappear. And if I plugged it back in, it should just reappear. And that's the one you want to flash, so keep that number in mind, COM6. I don't think it will hurt anything if you flash the wrong thing. I think it should roll back if you start flashing the wrong um, device, but keep in mind, I really recommend not risking that. So for the most part, I'm going to close out of this, reopen it, load in COM6, go under config, and then you want to go and hit the gear here and navigate to... The bin file, in my case mine's called ESP8266 Deauthor 1 Megabyte Bin. Open that up, then after you're done doing all that, we're not quite done yet, you want to go under Advanced, change the flash speed to 80, considering this thing has a fast enough um, flash speed that it can handle an 80 hertz flash rate or whatever, so do that and just try to match my general general settings and sorry I kind of burped there and you should be good to go just go back under operation and then flash just like that you're done but I want to point a few things out um 
if you do order one of these things, don't worry if the box is beat up or nothing. This thing is so small that it shouldn't break. And when I got mine, I was worried, to, worried that it broke because the packaging was all torn to hell. But for the most part, it's a pretty good kit. It comes with its own little paper here to label out the pins and everything. So that you can use this with many other projects. You don't have to actually use this thing as a Wi-Fi deauthory. The author, you can actually use this to control lights in your house, radios, and um, all kinds of various devices. But for the most part, guys, um, this will take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to fast forward the video here, and I'll meet up with you when the device is all flashed up and ready to use. So alrighty guys, our device is now flashed and ready to use. Now to use this thing, you're basically going to need to sign into it with Wi-Fi. You can either do this on your phone, tablet, or computer, it don't really matter. But basically, what you're going to go in there and look for is an access point called, um, Pwned. Now once you find it, you just click on it or whatever and sign in with it, with, sign in to it with the password called the author. I'll spell it out here on the screen here, but if you still can't figure it out, I'll leave a link down below to this tutorial on how to do this step. Now basically, you want to sign into the, the Wi-Fi device here, the Node MCU, and once you're signed in, you want to navigate to a, a specific IP address. Now to do this, all you do is go to any web browser on your phone, computer, or tablet and type in 192.168.2 Point, dot 4.1 sorry I kind of butchered it but I will show you the IP address on the screen now basically you sign into there and you got tons of settings you can scan for Wi-Fi access points you can target specific people on Wi-Fi access points and the best part is you don't have to actually be signed in to any of these um routers to perform the attack unlike a man in the middle attack now I can just right now shut off my neighbor's Wi-Fi if I want to, but I do not want to do that. I do not want to get in trouble. But for the most part, you can do this kind of a thing and no one will know it's you. There's no way to trace it back to you. But with that said, there, let's just take a look here at the settings page on the, the app itself or, well, the web browser page. Now, there are a lot of options here. First of all, you want to change the SSID right away. You do not want to leave this thing called Pwned. Or else somebody will go, hey, that's kind of fishy. Maybe we should um, report that access point or whatever the hell. But yeah, basically you want to change the SSID to whatever you want as well as the password to something that you can remember. Now, other than that, there ain't much else you can do. You can probably turn on the LED to show that you are performing an attack, which I will of uh, course turn on and then save now for the most part i'm gonna attack my own computer the one with the screen recording right now just to show that this works now i'm gonna have to do a system scan or a network scan considering i just reinstalled all the software and the access point ain't just gonna be on the the phone already listed okay there we go i'm gonna select that now i'm gonna go over to the attack tab and then hit the Auth. Now basically that's it. My computer is, well, actually all the Wi-Fi in my house right now should be deactivated except for any computer that is directly plugged into the router or any device that uses a Wi-Fi range higher than 2.4 gigahertz. But for the most part, as you can see, my device is now lit up to let me know that this attack is running. And for the most part, I'm just going to open up my web browser right now and try to look for something. How about we look up Google um, Frogs? How about that? Let's see if that works, shall we? As you can see, it's not working, and to show you that this is working even more so than just disabling the internet entirely, I'm going to show you that you can actually, um, beacon spam, which is actually the act of spamming a hotspot over and over repeatedly, and you'll see what I mean in a second. First of all, I'm going to, um, start a beacon spam just by hitting start beacon list, and if I were to go under my Wi-Fi settings now, you should see that a ton of fake access points will pop up. As you can see, I clearly just copied and pasted the words ha 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 repeatedly, except for a few words here and there just to let the person know how they've been 
like pranked, you know? I am the Wi-Fi. It's not broke. It's just me. Obey me. You know what I mean? You can do all kinds of things with this app. And for the most part, I'm not going to go over every little single setting today in this video. Maybe in a future video when I have a screen recorder on my phone to show you exactly what I'm doing. Not in the form of a screenshot. Now, I turned off the attack, so I should have Wi-Fi again. Now, let's try to check our page. As you can see, our page is now working. But for the most part, I'm going to close out of that. We're basically done, and forgive me if today's video is really long or if I worded things a bit weird. I am not feeling all too great tonight, and I just really wanted to make this thing today considering I just really got the device. Like, I haven't even taken the foam board off the pins yet. And for the most part, speaking of that, I'm going to actually add a lot more to this thing. I'm going to actually remove the pins and then attach an LED to it and mount it on my phone eventually with my 3D pen so that I can carry it with me wherever I am and just charge it up with the OT OTG cord, you know, on the go cable. But yeah, you can power this device up with anything. See, I removed it from my computer. I powered it in my, not powered it in. I plugged it into my battery pack. As you can see, it's on, it's working. There's no light, of course, considering I'm not attacking anything with it. But yeah, if you use a standard battery pack of about, I don't know, 5,000, 2,000 milliamps, this thing will go on for quite a long time, maybe a few days even. So if you're a real prick, you can actually leave this thing outside and like prank your friend for a few days straight by not letting them have any kind of Wi-Fi access. But I'm not going to be doing that kind of a thing, but it's up to you if you want to be that kind of a dick or not. But with that said, I'm going to leave today's tutorial video here. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. DTPK signing off. Peace. Allow 80, but it's not really. We're actually telling it to block port number 80, and if you do not fancy with nothing more than a 3D pen. Now, this is not my first time making...